This evening, I would like to explain to you who I am, my identity, my background, my deafness, and how I have transformed into the identity that I have today, and where those concepts built what I have come to call certism. You may wonder who I am. My family is comprised of all hearing people. I am the only deaf member. I was born in the year 1970. And as I was born, I was already deaf. I went to school in the oral tradition when I was a youngster until the age of nine. At the age of nine, I became involved in a mainstream program, a public school where my peers were hearing and I was the only deaf student. From the age of 10 until the age of 18, I was involved in that mainstream school. Again, that public school was oral. At that point, I then went to Paris. And while I was in Paris, I joined a public school again, but it had a strong deaf program where I learned sign language. And that's where my life changed. Once I became involved in a signing community, I then gained my identity as a deaf person. I realized that the oralism tradition in which I was raised was not really who I was but sign language then became a part of my spirit and I became a deaf person. When I went to the school for the deaf in Paris, although I had been raised using, in, uh, using my voice and my, audito my auditory skills, I then learned sign language but I was having mixed feelings. I still felt isolated and unsure of exactly who I was, but my identity had started to form and continued to grow through my time there. The next stage of my life consisted of attending university. I went to university and majored in history, which I truly loved. I enjoyed policy making, history, politics. It was a passion for me. At that time, in my university days, there were no support services. And for the first year, it was so frustrating that I then changed and became involved in the visual communications and art fields in the school where I was attending. I then went to Nice. I then went to Khan in the University of Cannes and studied art. Yeah. And in Ren, excuse me, it wasn't Khan, it was Ren. I studied various types of fine arts. I continued my I continued researching sculpture, poetry, and all the different arts that they had to offer in my school. <laughs> At that point in my life, I began to think about art in a different way. Through art, I began to find my own identity. And I then realized I am a deaf artist. And my identity was very strongly linked to art as a deaf person. Once I began to learn sign language and studied sign language and also art, excuse me, we need to clarify. Yeah. 
the environment that was there for me became something I could enjoy, hands and signs, then opened my environment. As I began to study perspective, space, and lo learn more about the public in general, I realized that art is a universal medium, and people paint and sculpt and have all different views of what art is. But I didn't feel as though I was part of that general art hearing world. My deafness in my world and my identity called for me to have a different experience with the art I was creating. Through this journey, I struggled with the art of the hearing world versus the art that I felt was my identity. And those barriers put in front of me were something I had to learn to overcome. The deaf art, as I was starting to call it, was something I was not showing to the world yet. As I thought to myself, what is my, what is my identity and how can I express it through art? I found new things and new ways to show how I was feeling. I wondered what art and deaf art really meant and what it would look like. I thought about society and their views of deafness and how they would perceive me and the art I was creating. The community at large studies art and thinks of it in a different way. They know history, they know art, they know deafness, they know a little bit about signs, and that information is out there in the world. But I had to understand how I could take that information, combine it with my life experience, and show the world what it actually meant to struggle. At that point, I had yet to announce these ideas or to show these ideas to something I knew that had to come out. The general process of art in the hearing world was something I learned and understand and used in my work as well. One of the art projects was a metal sculpture that I made where there was a cut in a metal sheet. It was a very jagged cut that split it into almost a triangular shape. It was split into thirds. I had the idea to make this to make this sculpture. The metal was a thick piece of metal that had a break down the middle and two breaks towards the sides. To create this piece, I didn't want very, I didn't want, thank you, I didn't want a clean look to the shape of the lines. So I then took a sledgehammer and physically pounded the lines and molded this into the sculpture I was hoping to create. I went, I went through, I went through different methods of trying to do this. I wanted it to look battered. I wanted it to look weathered. And my struggle and the force of which I used felt made me feel that the negativism that I had felt through my time I could put through the hammering process. It was a very emotional, very powerful process for me to beat and create this metal to make it look as though I wanted. And that was a project that I had had an idea of. And Express, was able to express the frustrations I had had through, through pounding of this metal, and then that became a visual representation of the struggles of which I had presented. My next piece was in an urban setting. Empty, concrete,
as you see here. So on the slide you can see a large empty space, concrete, surrounded with tall buildings. And in the center I decided to do something. I wanted to represent isolation and oppression, stereotypes and negativity. But within this deathly stark space, I wanted to show life. I wanted it to be a little satirical as well. My next idea was about compression, compressing a tree into a cube. So I set my piece up in a lovely park-like setting in nature, an area on the campus. I cleaned the area. I wanted to show a sense of control and constraint and rules and framework and structure. So the natural elements had to be changed. I decided to compress them into a cube, and that's how I expressed the My next piece, I wanted to represent the mocking attitude of the hearing culture or hearing world against deaf people. I wanted to express the hearing world that I saw in my everyday life. I saw bright colors. I had an idea to take a telephone booth, an everyday object that I saw in my life, and take out the normal light bulb and put in a red light bulb that would flicker to make people notice and think that something was not quite right. I wanted to represent, again, the limitations of being deaf in a hearing world. And I wanted to make hearing people see something and know daily world. Next, I wanted to talk about the concept of duality. That is my sign for duality. That is the French sign for duality. What it means is two, two ideas, two concepts with, held within one space and the tension between the two, the two concepts or ideas and the tension between those two modalities. So I express that in this next piece, a sculpture I created. Now, as you can see, a hearing person could make a piece similar to this, but I added a different touch. I made it duality, black and white, and the oppositional forces between those two ideas. I had I created a long shape, a lozenge shape, trying to fit itself into the hole within another shape. This represented the hearing culture and the deaf culture and deaf people not knowing where they fit within the hearing world. It's like a metaphor for a key in a door. And the dark and the light, the front and the back side of the front that we see in the My next piece, again, was black and white to show the contrast of two opposed concepts. So I took a balloon, a long shaped balloon, and a metal shape like a crescent. And I created a, 
a tenuous balance between the two to create a feeling of tension and discomfort. As I was making these projects, I wanted to show deaf identity, but I was still not ready to speak out about it. This was all a problem. Explain some more. In 1992, until 2008, I was enmeshed in exploring myself and the world, looking at art, French art, art of the world, and taking in these ideas, making comparisons, analyzing in my mind. During that period of studying art, I hadn't come up with a specific deaf idea yet. I was looking at French art. I knew something was growing within me, but I did not have a clear idea come to the fore yet. And then I saw the word Devia, an American idea of deaf art. <coughs> now understand, at that time, there was no communication between me and America. I was completely isolated. I did not have the internet. I did not speak English at that time. I had no idea of the deaf culture happening in America and Devia. I was working alone, isolated, struggling by myself, still knowing that I had to come up with some type of deaf visual language. And I struggled this way for 20 years. <laughs> Inside, this struggle within me, I knew that there was something there. I knew an idea was waiting to be found. And then I came up with this. I was at home. I had a hearing aid and batteries. I took many, many batteries and created a piece in echoing the shape of the sla diagonal slash through the ear. The deafness. From there, since 2008, I started further exploring these concepts and discovering new ideas. I found the word autism. I found the word deafness and handicap. I found the word deafhood. When I found such language, words for the concepts I had inside, I knew that I had identified something and things began to come together. I knew that I had found the crystallization that I'd been looking for. And I was now ready to show my ideas for the first time. I made a piece using a baby doll whose hands were encased and whose face was covered in batteries. And this began to, this opened the gates of my creative expression. Oh, wait a minute, I have to clarify something. I had to step out of myself for the first time and show a picture of this work to the public. I had been hiding, you understand for these 20 years, but then at that time I knew it was time to make my first step into the public and show my ideas. I showed these, this electric piece at Bruxelles in November 
2008. And then from 1995 to 2008, I, you can see how I changed from an inner isolated artist to a public involved engaged artist. So this whole process happened between the years 1995 to 2008. It was quite a journey. So I continued my exploration of art. My goal was to make powerful images. I knew finally that I was not alone as a deaf person, and be, I decided it was time to write a manifesto to share. So May 2009, at the Festival International, Clan Doi in Reims, France, July 2009, I showed my banner, Le Surdisme, the baby doll with the face made of batteries and the wires protruding from the booklet. My manifesto, that's the sign for manifesto. The reason for that, using that sign, is interesting. Now you understand, I had always had negative feelings about the art I had been doing. I had been operating in the traditional art motifs but knew that that wasn't right for me and when I realized that I had to come out as a deaf artist I created my manifesto and the idea was about making a powerful impact to gain equal footing with the hearing world so that so Surdism. How did I come up with that? The prefix surd means deaf. Surdi. That is from Latin. The blocking of the ear, the deafness, of course, obviously. I took that prefix, surdi, and I thought about how previously deafness well, had always been considered a medical condition. But I wanted to change it and make it into something positive and break away from that old idea. The second part of the word, ism, comes from the many ideas and movements that humans have been engaged in to show their values, leaving aside whether it is positive or negative. I just wanted to show an overarching value system. I looked to different fields. There were precedents. I looked to character, my own character. I looked to economics, politics, religion, Catholicism, Buddhism, Christianity, philosophy. Feminism and human rights, oppression, autism. 
I investigated theories and their meanings, theories of oppression, writings that had been done analyzing the phenomenon. I investigated education, moralism, bilingualism. All of these I included in my art, and by using the suffix ism, I expressed all these different movements throughout human history. As we can see, art has a long history, classicism, modernism, surrealism, cubism, and now sordism. I came up with an international sign for sordism, thusly. The reason I chose this particular sign it's because it refers first to the brain, the seat of our creative and intellectual powers. It does not depend on the ear. The brain is the seat for everything. And it refers to the third eye that we see in Buddhism. And then I connected it to the manual component. So the third eye, the mind, expressed through the hand. So, how can I explain? Well, first, of course, I elicited ideas from other people. I read, I studied, I researched, I thought. I engaged with other people and I established a group. Much like Devia established their group, their, my, my idea parallels theirs. So the word surdism why I chose that, was because I knew the deaf community had an identity, had activists, had been fighting to overcome oppression and reveal themselves. I wanted to assist in this. How could I drive this and hurry it along? I didn't want to use the idea or word handicapped. I wanted something new. So I came up with the new word to represent something different. The same idea. Devia, why did they come up with what they did? The idea of deaf art. They were fascinated with the experience of making art as deaf people. My idea of surdism in 209, I wrote my manifesto. I thought about the world of sign language and communication. Okay. So I thought Am I the only deaf artist working on surdism? I knew I couldn't be, and I knew I had to connect to the community. But I wasn't sure how. So I wrote my manifesto and made it public and allowed for the purpose of collecting feedback, hoping that people would respond. In May, my ideas started to spread. Oh, wait a minute, I need to clarify. Oh, 
Okay, excuse me. Okay, in 2009, one year later, well, 2009, my idea started to spread, and then I saw something happen in 2010. I started making contacts. People started asking me, what is this sordism? What does that mean? And I started to be asked to present in different venues and deaf arts festivals. So I knew I wasn't alone. I knew there were other fellow travelers out there. So I found Levant. That's the sign name for Levant. Was it that? His name was mentioned in some literature that I don't know. I had, s I had seen his name before in literature. I also met some other artists that I had heard of through my readings, and I began to make connections and create a network. Chuck Baird and Miller, I started communicating and connecting with other deaf artists that I began to find. So I went on a Google search. So I went on a Google search and I was inspired to find so much material. <laughs> America had what I had been doing. I was not alone. I was thrilled. I was inspired. I was appreciative. And I knew I could go on now. I made contacts and I was revived. I met Chuck Baird. I spoke on video relay with other artists and other names in the field, and we became a community. So in 2012, at the Louisville Festival two years ago, I went and met these people that I had been talking to, Patty and Karen Christie and other people people I had planned to meet, and then suddenly there they were, ready to connect and become involved. Through this process, meeting the people from Devia, it really changed my life. Devia has a manifesto, and I wrote the manifesto for Sirdism. If you compare these two works, one is not better or worse than another, but they have different points of focus. Mine was written in 2009. Theirs was in eight, 1989. So theirs was the original, and I have much respect for the <laughs> ideas that came from the original philosophy that they put forth. The word that I coined for surdism was different. I had heard of the words autism and deafhood, and there has been much writing about those two concepts. I included those concepts in my manifesto. Autism had a definite definition, and it was politically motivated word, but swordism was something I wanted to include with the art world 
it wasn't just autism or deafhood, but I wanted to include art concepts and the approaches people take in art. art to reflect what I was considering certism to mean. For me, certism includes culture, philosophy, how to open pathways for your life. Of course, there was a lot of work involved to make this art look so different and have a strong impact on the outside world. So we needed the concepts and the philosophies of art to be wedded with the philosophies of deafness and culture. Society often looks at deaf people as those who are different and those who are less than. But I think we can overcome those barriers and prove that we are just as equal to. In the past, of course, society has written many pages about the difference between deaf people and how sometimes there are so many negative aspects to being deaf. But I think we can prove them wrong through this movement. I enjoy politics. I like reading about it. I like learning about it. But when you add art to politics, it becomes even more strong, and that's what sordism represents. <laughs> Politics, of course, is a very strong and a very violent sometimes type of atmosphere. But art has a soft genuineness that we like to blend between the two. If you can look at the graph behind me, autism is a triangle. And within that triangle, you can see that deaf people are oppressed, deaf people are looked at from a medical point of view. And once you add art in relation to deaf hood, it then turns the triangle up to the other side. And deaf hood is a powerful positive force that neutralizes. This is an exhibit from Brussels. This took place in June 2010. Before 2010, I had talked about deaf art and certism and given lectures on the topic. This was in Brussels, Belgium. The building was quite extensive. This isn't a government building. This isn't just some building that was a museum someplace. This was an actual government building. This is where the ministers were, the government ministers. There was a woman who worked in the government, was quite interested in sign language and deaf culture, invited me to put my exhibit in this space. The space is vast. It's vast and it's quite empty. And we thought, I thought to myself, this is huge space. And again, this is inside the walls of the, of the building. So I think you might remember the doll that I had shown before with the mask of hearing aid batteries on the face. So I thought we could use that doll in this large space and it would be very, very powerful to see the isolation that this doll represents. So we had, as you can see in the background, there's these white graphs, sheets of metal. We built 
all of these fences. We, we built the fences. We made it in a circular pattern. The circular pattern represents the representation and the a continuation of autism and the struggles that we have felt throughout time as deaf people. You can see the metal structures. The metal fencing is placed around in a circular in a circular way. You can see that the baby, where its eyes would be, would look like it was trying to peer through a fence. And you can see how it goes round and round and round, and you have to look down into it where you can actually see the baby in the center. It's quite a large installation. It's, it's about 50 feet, approximately 50 feet, so it's very, very large. You have to walk all the way around the installation before you get to the middle to see. There's 280 meters of space that you need to walk through, and you see the fencing in a circular pattern. And again, that repetition shows the past and the history and all of the things that were forced on deaf people with <laughs> autism, their oral backgrounds, and not being allowed to express their own, their own we have a movie to show you. The name of the movie is Two Captives, Two Slaves, Two... Oh, one fist over the other bound together. One represents deafness and one represents, quote, mute. This talks about the history Back in the time of Hitler and Nazism, you will see a piece of that reflected in the movie as well. So all of that history will be shown.